So this is how I've been pruning my grapevines. This is called the Thompson's Green Grapevine. And I have to prune these a little bit more different than I did the flame seedless. It's called cane pruning. Truthfully, cane pruning took me much longer to understand. And even now, I'm still learning and making mistakes and making adjustments as I continue to practice this method. So without further ado, here's how I cane prune my grapevines on an arch cattle panel trellis to get a fairy tale effect, just like this one. First, I began by planting two bare root grapevines. Bare root grapevines are usually less expensive than potted grapevines, but they're usually available to order in online nurseries during the winter time. Some garden centers and local nurseries will often carry them for a few weeks in the spring as well. Potted grapevines are usually more expensive in my area, but I can usually find them in most garden centers and local nurseries throughout the entire year. I prefer to plant bare root grapevines because I get more for my money and they grow so vigorous that in a few weeks time, they can grow as big, if not bigger and faster than potted grapevines. For serendipity, I bought one bare root Thompson seedless grapevine from a nursery in Texas and another bare root of the same variety from Walmart. And I planted one grapevine on each side of the arch trellis. At first, I plan to prune them into the shape of an uppercase letter T the way I saw done on wire trellises, but that would give me fruit at the bottom of the trellis with leaves filling the rest of the arch. And that's definitely not the effect I'm going for. I want clusters of grapes to dangle from one end of the arch all the way to the other end of the arch. And the solution I found was to prune these grapevines into the letter Y. However, instead of leaving spurs, which are short canes with only a few buds, I leave canes, which are long, lignified vines with many buds. After I plant my grapevines, I wait for them to wake up in the spring because this means they will start growing vines all over the place. At first, the vines are a bright green color and over the course of the year, they will turn brown and woody. And these are now canes. In the winter, their leaves will turn yellow before falling off, and this means the vine is going to sleep, and now is my opportunity to prune the canes. To do this, I inspect every cane before selecting the two best looking ones. I want them to be slightly thicker than a pencil, smooth, and long enough to reach the halfway point of the arch trellis. I also try and choose ones with three to five buds every foot or every 12 inches. And I stay away from any canes that are thinner than a pencil or wider than my thumb. Lastly, I make sure all four canes are growing out of the head of the grapevine. And the head is basically the top of the trunk of the grapevine. After choosing my top two canes, I'm going to choose two runner up canes. These will be turned into renewal spurs for the next year, but we'll get to that in a moment. Any other cane aside from the four canes that I chose will be pruned off at the head of the vine. Now that the vines are a little bit more cleaned up, I can rearrange my top two main canes into the shape of a letter Y. I like to use cotton twine to secure them in place and I make sure to leave enough space for the vine to thicken and expand over the year. I also try to keep these canes about a foot away from the edge of the arch trellis because otherwise during the summertime they're going to grow so fast that they'll start spilling over the edge and it'll make the pathways a lot more messy. Now we can focus on the two runner up canes. I'm going to turn these into renewal spurs by pruning them back to two buds. Renewal spurs are important because the buds on them will produce vines that will turn into the main canes for the next year. I always want to leave one renewal spur for each main cane. And you're about to see why. In the spring, the vine will wake up again and new shoots will begin to grow from the buds on the canes and the buds on the renewal spurs. And some of the shoots that come from these buds will make fruit. This is why I want to train them into a letter Y so there is fruit coming from the buds on the canes all the way up the arch trellis. 
Throughout the year, the new shoots that grow from the main canes will lignify and this means that they will turn brown and woody and they'll go from being vines to being canes. Then, when winter comes around again, the grapevines will drop their leaves before falling asleep. And now is the perfect time to prune the grapevine again. First, I chop off the main canes that I kept last time because these are too old now and wider than the width of my thumb so they're not ideal for fruiting anymore. Now, I need to replace them with two new fresh main canes. To do this, I choose the best two looking canes that are growing from the renewal spurs I left last time. These canes are a little wider than a pencil, but not as wide as my thumb. They're smooth, they have about three to five buds every foot, and they're long enough to reach the halfway point of my arch trellis. Once I've chosen my two main canes, I need to choose the next two best looking canes to turn into renewal spurs. And I just wanna make sure that these are growing from the head or near the head as much as possible. Renewal spurs are important because the buds on them will grow the vines that will turn into the main canes for the next year. And keeping them near the head helps maintain the form of the grapevine over the years. Next, I cut the remaining canes down to two buds each, but I don't count any at the base of the cane. Now that they are pruned down, they are no longer considered canes. They are now renewal spurs. And the last thing I do is to clean up any shoots that grew out of the main canes. And now that pruning is complete, the grapevines will stay asleep for a few more weeks before waking up in the spring. As they begin to wake up, the buds on the main canes and the spurs will begin to look kind of fuzzy. Then a little bit of green will peek out before a new vine emerges. And these vines will create clusters of blooms that will turn into bunches of grapes. Now one thing I've observed about cane pruned grapes is that when the flower clusters appear, they are usually higher up on the new vines. In comparison to my spur pruned grape vines, where the flower clusters are a little bit lower down on the vines, closer to where the spur is located. On my Thompson seedless grape vines, I've noticed the first clusters emerge with the fourth or fifth pair of leaves on the new vines. And I'm not sure if this is the same for all cane pruned vines, but it seems to be the pattern with mine so far. By summertime, the arch trellis should be dripping in clusters of grape bunches from one end to the other. And that is how I cane prune my grapevines on an arch trellis. Now, I'd like to know if you can pinpoint which big mistake I made this year while cane pruning my grapevines. P.S. I also apologize for my screaming cat. He's mad that I closed the door to film this voiceover, but I hope that helps. Now back to the video. Flame seedless, for me personally, are a lot easier to prune than these. With these, I don't wanna keep the canes that I used last year. Those are gonna be a little bit too old. They're not gonna give me as much fruit. I want some new, fresh canes. Some really nice looking new, fresh canes. I need to figure out which ones those are, cause I don't know. There's so many to choose from. But let me bring you a little closer so I can show you what I'm looking for. These are the older canes from last year. You can tell by just how thick and older they look. These are a little bit older too. But then in the back, you can see the difference between this one and this one. This one just looks a lot newer. Same thing over here, look at this. This one looks really nice and smooth. So I might wanna go for some of those. And I think I wanna keep two, just like the other trellis. You can see some of the older grapevines are a little bit darker in color. They're a little bit stiffer, they're kind of peeling. The newer ones are gonna look kind of like this. Like, look at these. I want to make sure that whichever canes or like arms I keep are long enough that they can make it like halfway up the trellis. That way I get a nice shape to my grapevines. The way I've been pruning them is I'm starting to kind of develop a head right here or like a fist. And each year I let two fingers, my hands are really dry. I let two fingers go like this. And then the next year I chop them down and I let two more fingers grow, you know? The newer fingers. I don't want to keep the same two fingers because otherwise those will continue getting thicker and thicker and I won't get as much production. I want it to be nice and fresh. For this grapevine, I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to get rid of this one because these are a little too old for me. And I think I want to keep the one in the back and I think I might want to keep either this one or this one. Maybe this one. I want to keep the smoother ones for right now. First, I'm going to get rid of any vines that I know I'm not going to keep for sure. Like those. With the cane prune grapevines, I'm definitely going to need to use loppers because I can't do it with my hand pruners. It's going to be way too difficult. You see this one right here? This one's got to go. There's no way I'm keeping this one. 
right? Wait, 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 let, 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 me, let me double check first. Okay, so I think I'm gonna keep this one and this one because I think these look the best. And then I'm gonna get rid of these two and this one right here. Let me separate these two. That way it's easier for me to clean up. Okay, so you see, now that they're detached, it's easier to see which ones I kept. And I guess this one I could cut down just a little bit more. There we go. And same thing with these. And now that I know I'm not gonna use these for this year's grapes, I can start trying to untangle them. See how long they are? These things are huge. I'm gonna have to get back up on the ladder because there's a lot of places I can't reach. But I got the bottom portion cleaned up for the most part. Untangling the grapevines is definitely one of my least favorite parts. And I'm pruning off these pieces just to make it easier to untangle. I think I can do the rest of this with my hand pruners. I just wanna make sure that I don't chop down the vines that I'm keeping. So I'm always looking down to see where they're starting from so that I don't accidentally chop them down. take me a while oh my god okay I'm just gonna work quietly for the next like 30 minutes to untangle this mess because <laughs> I'm gonna be here forever but it's okay it'll be worth it this would be a lot faster right now if I wasn't trying to preserve these grapevines for my trellises Usually every year what I do is I chop them up into smaller pieces as I'm working because that makes the whole process way, way faster. But because I wanna repurpose these grapevines, I wanna make sure that I keep them as long as I possibly can because that's gonna look so beautiful on the, on the other trellises that I made.
this hole. I'm gonna do it in time lapse because this is gonna take me a while. <laughs> my, my camera's gonna die before I'm done. <laughs> Now that I have all of my grapevines pruned, which by the way, took forever. I'm glad I did it in time-lapse because otherwise, oh, <laughs> I feel like my body's starting to ache a little bit just from pruning the grapevines because it's really hard lignified vines and it, it takes quite a bit of like energy to do. Um, but now that I'm done with that, I have, all of these leftover grapevines that are super freaking long. Usually what I would do is just chop them down into smaller pieces and then I would propagate some and then the rest of them I would just have to throw away. But this year I'm doing something different. Instead of getting rid of them, I'm gonna use them as like material to add some whimsy to the DIY trellises that I built like what, two years ago probably at this point. I like, let me show you what they look like first and then I'll get started with these. But basically I'm not gonna throw these away, I'm gonna reuse them. Pardon me. <laughs> Jesus. And here's a sneak peek of what, okay. And here's a sneak peek of the project that I use the, okay. And here's a little, okay. And here's a sneak peek, okay. And here's a sneak peek of my DIY. <laughs> and here's a sneak peek of what I did with these grapevines.
So did you figure out the mistake? I did not leave renewal spurs. And that unfortunately is one of the most important steps in cane pruning grapevines on an arch trellis to get the best quality canes for the next year's harvest. And it completely slipped my mind, but also at the same time, I was very unsure of what I was doing. I was still practicing. Keep in mind, I had now waited a whole year, well, almost, I guess, a whole year to prune these vines again. My memory was a little bit rusty. And even though I watched tutorials, I still was very confused on what to do and what not to do. And after I was done pruning the grapevines, I had that feeling like I had forgotten something or like I'd done something wrong. And then I realized there was a renewal spurs as I was creating the animations for this video and brainstorming the process of cane pruning grapevines on an arch trellis. So I know what I have to do next year to improve my harvest, to improve the quality of the fruit, and to get the best canes possible. So I hope this video helped you and know that no matter what, it's okay to make mistakes in the garden. Messing up does not make you a bad gardener. It makes you an experienced gardener.